So I first want to speak about how um, there are no punishments in imagination. There are only fulfillments of states. If, if you feel you are being punished, you are fulfilling some state within you. You might feel guilty, and that's why you're, feeling, that's why you're being punished in your mind. People, people in your mind are only messengers revealing to you who you are. They're only telling you who you are in your mind. The people in your mind, those imaginary people who seem to be fake, but they, they, are, they reveal to you who you are. They treat you the way you want to be treated in the mind. They only obey orders. And um, so you don't need to fear anybody. And if you feel that you are having reoccurring thoughts, it's because it's stemming from a certain state that you've taken. Now a state is a belief towards the self, about yourself. Like I said, if you feel guilty, you will conjure up thoughts of punishments. If you feel ashamed, you will thought, think about all your past mistakes. These thoughts are not random and they have a nature to them. And the nature is correlated with the state, with the nature of the state. But the state is, um, is not the cause either. It's actually the I am before that state is the cause. It's you who's the cause. States lead to thoughts and thoughts lead to actions and actions lead to scenarios. So you don't, and I think what happens is that we tend to try to control scenarios. We then, once we realize we can't, we try to control people. You can't, and then you try to control your um, your actions, and you realize that there's such a war between you with your actions and your thoughts, and then you can't do that. And then you try to go towards the thoughts because it's too hard with the actions, and then you find that you can't control your thoughts either. They're they're just they're too crazy, and then you try to, and you find out that the thoughts are stemming from a state, and the state um, is still not the cause though. We're not we have a, we found a correlation between your thoughts and your, and your state, it's not causation, we need to find causation. If you take a step back even further, you'll find it's the labelless, stateless imagination that's not a state. And the I am is um, what I call, I call the I am the man in imagination, the one who lives in imagination. That's who I think we truly are. That's what I believe. I, that's really what I know. But. Um, I want to explain how I've been asked the question. I was like, how do you, do I imagine? And when I buy, when I say imagine, I don't mean visualize. I mean, I just, I mean, like, how do I create things in my mind? I guess you want to call it. Really, really, we're just discovering what's already there in your mind. You're not creating anything. But um, I'll just do a step by step of what I do, and I'll leave this in the, um, in the description. But I remember that my only goal is to become the one I want to be in imagination only. So I think about what I want to be, anything. Then I assume I am in imagination. And in imagination I can be all things. So I assume it in imagination. I become it inside of imagination. Okay? And when I say the words I am, I'm not speaking about this outer body, but the inner man. The inner man to me is I am. And I know that all I must change is I am to change my life. You can think of it, what he is, the man inside, I am. I must accept that I am that inner man, experiencing in present tense what I desire. So I want to give an example. Is that suppose I want to go to Las Vegas, but I am in New York. Okay, I'm in New York, I'm in my apartment, and I, uh, not really, but that's just, you know, for the sake of an example. I'm there, and I want to go to uh, to Las Vegas, but um, I don't have a plane ticket, but I want to go there. So I would imagine myself in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Lobby. That's where I would, I would just put myself there. This is an example. And so while I'm looking around at the lobby, I see people walking around and, I'm, and I see you know, the line, I see the floor and I see everything that would normally be there, check in or whatever it is. And I assume that the inner man that is in Las Vegas is the real me. That's I am. So I assume that I am in Las Vegas. I say that, I am in Las Vegas. I say it as if I'm speaking, because I am. If I am that inner man, then I really am in Las Vegas. I assume that I am that inner man that's experiencing my desire, which is to be in Las Vegas. I, I, if I identify myself with the inner man, 
then yes, it is a present fact that I am in Las Vegas. To deny this is to be delusional. And I'm looking at the lobby and I see people around, I see them walking, and of course I am there. Now you can take this example and you can multiply this um, amongst other desires. That if you want to be happily married, you could see the ring and you could feel that you're proud to be married, proud to be with that partner. And if you are proud and you identify yourself with that inner man, then you are proud. You are in a marriage. You are happily married. It's what you are. You imagine yourself to be the inner man. You assume that you stop allowing the world to shape I am. And you let the inner man become I am. That's who you really are. You shift the feeling of I am from outward and you shift it to inward. That's what you're doing. You stop identifying yourself with the outer man, the temporal man, and you identify yourself with the divine man, the eternal man who can hear and see and do and be anything they want in imagination. And it's not something that, you know, you're going to be. You, like, you already are it. So when I imagine myself in Las Vegas, I'm not questioning, well, what if it doesn't work? How do I know I'm there? Um, what if, um, well, to me, it's like, well, if I am the inner man, then I am there. There is no how. I already am there. If I, there's no when because I already am here. And there's no what if it doesn't work because it's already worked for the I am within me. I already am in Las Vegas. I'm not wondering if my manifestation will work because I, I don't identify myself with the outer man. I'm the inner man. And the inner man is experiencing himself in Las Vegas. So there's no, there are no questions in I am. They're all answered. There's no like, well, am I really fulfilled? It's not really, that's not, the, that's not really a question. You're experiencing fulfillment. And when you can identify yourself with the I am, you can feel entirely safe and free in your mind. Because that's the creator. You're the creator in this entire world. People are only messengers. You don't have to feel like anything's going to be ruined unless you allow it to be ruined. If you identify yourself with the inner man. And you can do it. It's just an assumption away. You just move that I am to the inner self, which is the feeling of you know experiencing it. There's no questioning. Neville gave the example. He said, um, uh, "Suppose I'm in New York and I want to be in San Francisco." He said that he goes physically, I'm not there, but I would imagine myself in San Francisco. I was like, "I'm there, not no, no, I'm not there, but in imagination, I'm there." And he says, "But imagination is my real self." And where he is, I, the outer self, will go. You can have anything you want in imagination. The question is, I know you can imagine anything, but can you believe it? That's the question. Can you believe it? Can you? That's the only price to pay uh, amongst anything in imagination. You can conjure up any sentence, anything you want to hear. The question is, do you believe it? You need to free I am from the senses and the reason from these bondages. You need to free the I am. You save that I am from its own bondage. And you save it by associating, itself, associating it with the inner man who is free in imagination. And I, that's how I imagine. That's how I think about this. And it works wonders. If you really allow yourself to feel that you're the inner man experiencing it, no matter what it is, no matter what the world says, you. Stop allowing that to dictate your I am. You can feel entirely free. And that's the way. The way to what? To anything I want. It's the way to Las Vegas. It's the way to um, hearing this compliment. It's the way to experiencing that experience. It's the way. It's not, I don't have to go to anybody outside of me. I just need to appropriate it and assume that I am the one experiencing that in imagination. Assume that I am the man in imagination. Um, I can also speak more about this. Of course I can. But um, I'm going to leave that for now. I think that's enough to contemplate about.